Welcome back, and if you're new, then greetings! I'm very happy to be introducing to you guys and talking about the Vietnamese Blue Beauty Rat Snake. This here is Sapphire. She is my female Vietnamese Blue Beauty Snake, and as you can see, she's absolutely stunning and, and uh, maybe not the happiest with me. The name Beauty Snake is very well earned. Beauty Rat Snakes are sometimes also called cave racers and they are a long and thin semi arboreal species in the colubrid family. Now these guys' babies tend to be really bitey, they're very defensive and territorial. Um, I actually do have uh, some leather gloves here that I was using but she's actually behaving really well for me right now and I'm actually pretty impressed and happy about it. There's absolutely no shame in wearing leather gloves when handling. Um, we use them all the time at vets and zoos when it is necessary. Overall, nobody really likes to get bit. Because they are babies and they're still so small, their bite actually doesn't hurt, but it can still break the skin and it can still be unpleasant. So right now, I'm just trying to get them a little more used to handling, and my female is uh, doing a lot better than my male is. As you can see, she's actually uh, being fairly tame, but she can have a bit of attitude to her. There's about nine different subspecies that are recognized, and I'm not gonna list all of them here, but the ones that tend to be more common in the reptile hobby are the Taiwan beauty snake, the Chinese beauty snake, and uh, these guys right here, the Vietnamese blue beauty snake. One of my favorite subspecies that I quickly wanted to mention here is the cave dwelling beauty Beauty snake. Besides the blue beauty snake, I feel that the cave dwelling snake is my next favorite. They're virtually patternless and they can sport some pretty fruity colors too. I first fell in love with beauty rat snakes when I was handling a rescued one that was at the zoo that I work at. I was working at one of our public exhibits and a guest had come up to me and asked if they would be able to meet and see the Taiwan beauty that we had on display. I didn't want to disappoint so I asked a co-worker if she was okay for handling and if she was tame and I was given the okay. And then from there I had just absolutely fallen in love with them. Like they're just so beautiful. From there on, woo! <laughs> Oh, did you guys see that? Did she actually get my face? Oh my god. Ooh, see what I mean though? These guys can be pretty bitey. These guys' babies are pretty defensive, but she is a lot more laid back, believe it or not, than my male is. I've gone a lot more farther with her than I have with him. Since then, I've dreamed about owning a beauty rat snake, and I never thought that I would ever be able to own one, not to mention own what I would argue is one of the most beautiful subspecies. I was very thankful and appreciative that my blues were actually gifted to me by somebody. I did originally find an ad on Kijiji that was looking for a female needing to be rehomed. I had reached out to this person and we found out that we actually had some mutual friends and connections and we ended up uh, getting to know one another better and after that he decided that he wanted to gift her to me instead. I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> like We kept in touch after that but about a week or so later, we're switching hands here, I'm sorry, he messages me asking if I also wanted to take in his male Vietnamese blue beauty. I was like, wait, what? I was so flattered at first, but I had actually originally said no. I was a little overwhelmed by such a generous offer after he had just given me the female, but after giving it some thought and talking to a few people who had said I'd be absolutely stupid to not take in uh, a pair, I finally said I would take him. Please don't bite my face. 
Now this is Blue, my male Vietnamese Blue Beauty rat snake, and he's about to shed soon as you can see. Apparently the breeder that had given him to the person that had given him to me felt he wasn't ideal to sell at full price because of a kink that he has in his tail. I think it just makes him all the more special and it doesn't seem to bother him one bit. I was told that it takes them about four to five years for them to reach their adult size, which is usually quoted around seven to eight feet long, but some specimens of up to 11 plus feet have been mentioned. A lot of sources say that a four foot long by two foot is usually suitable for one adult beauty snake, but I definitely wouldn't go any smaller than this. This should be your bare minimum. If you can go bigger, then I would definitely encourage it and, uh, I'm sure your beauty snake will appreciate it too. When these guys are halfway to their adult size, I am planning to build them a custom four foot by four foot by two foot enclosure, which will be suitable hopefully for them until they reach their adult size. When my Vietnamese blue beauties are full grown and adult size, I plan on building them like some massive six foot long, I don't know, 150 something gallon tank, just something grand and special. Spectacular. That's probably gonna be a future project and video. But today we're just gonna be setting up a simple vivarium for these guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you wanna keep this kind of content coming. And with all that said and done, let's get into the video. Today is tank setup day, and here is Blue and Sapphire being absolutely adorable, coiled around each other in a branch. This is the tub setup that I currently have for my Vietnamese Blue Beauties. It's just in a Rubbermaid bin. They're such a beautiful snake, so ideally I don't want them in this uh, plastic tub setup. I would ideally like them to be on display so I can see and appreciate them and all of their beauty. They've been quarantining in here for about, I'd say, a month now. A little longer than I'd like, but I had some other projects to complete before I could get their project done, so now they are finally ready to go inside their new enclosure. And there's my female over there, Sapphire, looking, looking gorgeous. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of the decorations out of this tub because I'm gonna use them in their new setup. All right, so <laughs> I've torn apart their habitat. They're not very happy with me, but it's okay because they're gonna be going into a better one. It is all for naught. So here I have the 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra. This is what we have for the vivarium right now. This was my Emerald Tree Skinks old quarantine tank. I've cleaned it out and I've changed some of the substrate and um, there was already this pothos plant that was growing inside the tanks. It was a hot mess so I just helped myself to untangling it and then just sort of twist tied it to the top of the background there. And then I also have this really nice piece of driftwood that I found myself. So these are gonna be some of the materials that we're using. I have some branches. I have some hides here that I'm gonna be adding to the enclosure. I also have one of those magnetic ledges. I don't know if they will use it, but I'm gonna put it in there anyway. Water bowl is a staple. And then of course, some beautiful plants to decorate the enclosure with. And with all that said and done, let's get this party started. Yo, listen up, here's the story about the little guy that lives in the blue world. And all day and all night and everything he sees is just blue. Like him, inside and outside blue.
so this is what we've done. I didn't want to go too crazy, so I really only have three plants in here and just a lot of stuff to climb on and hide in. But uh, let's, uh, let's take a closer look. This beauty over here that I have is a new plant that I'm trying out. This is Croton, Croton. I'm trying really hard not to say crouton. Then back here, I have the pothos plant and that's kind of growing all back there. And then I have it coming up the background over there. Then in the very back here, I have the snake plant. It's already pretty tall. Under here in the front, I just have one of their hides. Then I have a water dish in the corner over here. I have another hide back there for them as well. And in the back, I have this beautiful piece of driftwood that I found last year. And um, I clean and disinfected that myself, along with all the other uh, wood pieces that are in this enclosure. Now for heating and lighting, I just have a UVB light here. I have a Zoom it's uh, Reptisun and this is, I don't know how long this one is, it's a short one. And then up here I just have a light fixture with a ceramic heat emitter, which I'll show you right here. This is a ceramic heat emitter. It emits heat and it's ceramic. Overall, pretty simple setup. This is just their baby tank and it's probably only going to be good for, I don't know, about a year. I don't know how fast this species grows, so I'll just be keeping an eye on them. And uh, whenever they get too big for this tank is when they get too big for this tank. And we'll switch them out for a bigger tank in the future. But right now they're itty bitty little babies and they're super cute. And we're going to put them in this tank and I'm really excited for that. So let's go get the blue beauties and let's go uh, put them in. First we're going to put in Sapphire My Female. Staring me down. Alright, let's put them in. All right, there's one. And finally, here's Blue, my male. He's a lot smaller than my female. Well, not a lot. I find that his head's just a lot smaller. All right, so we're gonna go put him in his tank. And my girlfriend here is helping me. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this video out. I would love to do more videos on my Vietnamese blue beauties. Uh, they're an absolutely gorgeous species of snake. And see you guys next week for another video. Bye.